will not lead him to belief, rather lead him to arrogance and pride and say, I made it all by myself and he denied that God has any favor on him. In Surah Al-Buruj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ النَّارِ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ It's a beautiful and interesting story. It shows us the following. In order to see the challenges that we face day to day as Muslims, and those challenges, do not expect them to soften or to be lighter or to cease. As long as you are a believer, until the day of judgment, there will be challenges, there will be tests and trials. You pass them, you succeed. You fail, you fail them. There was a king who had a sorcerer. The king used to claim that he is God. And he had a sorcerer used to help him to do things to control people. The sorcerer was getting old. So he asked him, Your Majesty, I'm afraid that I will die and there is no one to succeed me. Could you appoint an intelligent young man to teach him my tricks so that he can succeed me in serving you? So they interviewed people and they found a very intelligent boy. So they sent him to that sorcerer so that he can teach him and instruct him how to be a magician. Guess what? He started going to him and on the way he happened to pass by a monk, a believer. Not from the home of Prophet Muhammad, from the nations before us. After Moses, peace be upon him. So he visited with him and he learned from him that the king is not the Lord, he's not God, he's a human being, and God is one, and he's our creator. So he told him about Islam and belief. So he liked it. And it made sense, especially when he was learning from the search for evil tricks, and he knew how the king controls people. He had to recognize the truth that the king is nothing but a human being. One day as he was going to the sorcerer for the daily routine to learn magical tricks, people were shocked to see a huge beast, something as big as this building. And it sat down and knelt down in the middle of the road. Cutting off the road, people could not go to their businesses could not proceed to their farms. They were stuck and they were so scared. They didn't know what to do. They could not even approach or get close to the beast. So this young boy, he was going for his daily routine to the sorcerer and there he found the beast and people were standing by. They didn't know what to do. So he said, today I shall find out which teachings are best. The teachings of the monk for the teaching of the sorcerer. And he picked up a stone. Then he said, Oh Allah, if the monk is telling the truth and his religion is better to you, then kill this beast and dismiss it away from here so that people can go by. He said, Bismillah, and he threw the stone against the beast and he killed it immediately without any resistance. People cheered and they celebrated, they were very happy and they were able to cross safely to their businesses. Then he went to the monk and he told him about what happened. So the monk said, you know what? You become greater than I am and you should expect a big test of trial. The greater you get, the greater is the test or the trial. So, he told him, now you gotta believe in the oneness of Allah, you gotta do this and this and this and that. Allah blessed this young boy with some very nice features, such as he gave him the power that whenever he prays for somebody who is congenital blind, yani born blind, or a little person 
or with any disease, Allah will cure it immediately. So he became very famous with that. He's not a doctor though, but Allah blessed him with these karamat. So one of the advisors of the king was blind. He heard about the boom. He decided to pay a visit, then he can give him his sight back. And he brought a lot of gifts with him, then he knocked on his door. When he saw him, how can I help you? He said, I'm such and such very prestigious person, the advisor of the king. I brought you all of those gifts for you so that you can give me my sight back. He said, I do not give anybody sight. I'm just a human being. He said, but you few people, he said, not me. It is Allah. It is God who cures. He said, then how can I give you? He said, first you have to believe in Allah and invoke Him. And I will pray for you. He said, okay, and He will give you my sign back. He said, yes, if you do so. So he believed in Allah. And the Lord prayed for him. And Allah immediately gave him his sign back. This day he went to the court of the king. He sat with him but without any help. Because that he was able to see. The king said, well, who gave you your sight? He said, Allah, my Lord. He said, I didn't give you anything. He said, no, not you. My Lord and your Lord is Allah. He said, do you have any other God besides me? You know, the most foolish thing ever happens is when a human being thinks that he is something. You are not thinking that he is God. How can a human being ever thinks of himself that he is God or a superpower? You know, if a human being does not eat, what will happen? Well, die. So if you cannot even maintain your own life, how is it expected to maintain the life of others? Even insects. If a human being does not drink for three or four days, he's dead, dehydrated, and dead. If a human being stops breathing for five minutes, he's definitely playing dead. If you eat a meal and it is bad or spoiled, you immediately get stomach and diarrhea. How can you imagine that God will get sick and have diarrhea or constipation and he runs back and forth to the bathroom? He's busy, he cannot manage the affairs of his people because he has diarrhea. Till today there are people who worship humans like them, worship animals, worship idols. What happened to our intellect? What happened to the, the, the blessing that Allah gave us? Reasoning and reflecting. So he said to the king, My Lord and your Lord is Allah. The king immediately tortured him. So that he was weak and he told him about the boy. The boy was captured and brought to the king. And he was tortured. So he told him about the monk. The one who inspired him first, a rocket. They got hold of the monk, and the king said, You're the source of all evil. If you do not abandon your religion and worship me again, I'm gonna kill you. Not a chance. Don't even try. That will never happen. So he cut him into half. He split him after he tortured him. Then he wrote his advisor, the one who got his sight back, and he said, if you do not abandon your religion and convert that, I'm going to kill you. He was tortured and he was killed likewise. Then he came to the boy and he wanted truly to kill him in such an awful way that everybody would learn a lesson from that. So he ordered a troop of officers to take him to the peak of the highest mountain and say, when you go there, offer him. If he changes his religion, and he comes back to his senses, or else, else what? Throw him off the mountain, so that he will die in a miserable way, following all the way from the peak of the mountain to the ground. So they took him, and when they climbed to the peak of the mountain, the boy turned to the heaven and invoked Allah and said, Oh Allah, save me from them. By any means that you like, he did not ask a particular way to be saved with, 
He said, just take me as you wish. So Allah Almighty caused the mountain to shake vigorously. Stones of rocks started falling apart, and all of the soldiers fell off the mountain and they all died. But the boy was staying. So he got on the mountain, he descended, and where did he go? He did not run away. Rather, he went back to the king. And he entered his palace, and the king was going crazy. What happened to you people? What happened to the soldiers who were sent with you? He said, Allah took care of them. Allah again? So he sent another troop and said, This time, don't take him to the mountain. Take him on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And offer him, if he abandons his face, or drown him, fly a huge rock in his pot, and drown him so that he can sink. They did. Take him in the middle of the sea or the ocean. And the Lord once again said, Oh Allah, save me from them. Why would shiver me you wish? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a tornado. It caused the waves to be very high and it flipped the boat and everybody died except for the boy who was staying and walked back to the over there to, uh, to the beach or the shore safely. Then he walked again to the king in his palace. The king said, What's wrong? He said, Allah came to all and saved me. And he told him, Look, if you really want to kill me, you have to follow my instruction. There is no way that you can kill me or get rid of me unless if you do what I tell you. He said, tell me. He said, you have to gather all the people in the country, gather them in one square, where everybody can see what will happen. Then, take an arrow from my quiver, place it in your bow, aim it at my face or chest, and say the following recitation. Say, Bismillah, the Lord of this boy. When you do that, you will be able to kill him. The king was willing to do anything to kill the boy. And he was so fool that he did exactly what the boy said. He gathered the people, everybody in the country came. They wanted to see the awful fate of this boy whom they thought his remains. And the king took an arrow from his quiver and he aimed at it, but he did not hit it. Why? Because he did not say, Bismillah, the word of the boy in a loud voice. So he said, you gotta listen to me and say what I told you. So he said it out loud, Bismillah, Rabbil Mula. Everybody could hear the king who claims that his God is saying, in the name of God, let me God kill this boy. So when he did that, and he shot him, he killed him exactly as he prescribed. So when people saw that the king was so weak and could not do anything unless if he sought the help of Allah, they all said at once, we believe in the Lord of the boy, we believe in the Lord of the boy. So in one trip, everybody became believers. So the advisors of the king said, look, the boy outsmarted you. And now what are you going to do? All people became believers. But his army was still under his control. So he ordered them to dig ditches and trenches and he kindled fire in them and said, Everyone who does not come back to my religion and abandon the new faith of the boy, throw him in the ditch. Imagine people who just accepted Islam and became believers right now, few minutes ago, but out of belief and conviction. <coughs> They did not accept Islam because they wanted to marry a Muslim. Or did not accept Islam because they wanted to get a visa and work in a Muslim country. Or, or, or for any only reason, no. They accepted it out of conviction, belief. So now they were willing to do anything, even if they sacrifice their own lives for the sake of Allah. 
They started throwing people one after another in fire until they were 